Welcome back to Uncle Matt's Cookery Lessons. Today I'm going to make pork pies, an absolute classic. I'm going to try to stick as close to the classic sort of Melton Mowbray, but I'm afraid I don't have a dolly. So I'm going to be making uh, mine using the Daria Moulds. So for the absolute purists out there, I do apologise, but you know, get over it. It's going to be delicious anyway. I'm going to make individual ones that I think is the, um, is the perfect size. Anyway, I'll uh, bring you a bit closer and I'll run you through the ingredients. So, the ingredients. Pork shoulder, pork belly. I've got some braised ham hock, but you can replace that with a nice smoky bacon. The herbs there, I've got some rosemary, sage and parsley. White pepper, salt, lard, very important. The egg is for the egg wash at the end. And there's some plain flour, and also some black pepper. So what I'm gonna do, I'm uh, if it was using bacon, I would just dice it up with a knife. But what I'm gonna do here, I'm just, Shredding it with my fingers because it's nicely, softly braised, but we'll, we'll fast forward to when that's finished. The rest of the meat, I'm going to dice. You could, if you wanted to, just buy some minced pork. By all means, you know, it will still be nice, but the classic is not minced. It is finely diced. So do take your time. And this, believe me, does take a little while, so I will skip to the end. But the difference is, it is going to be far nicer to eat if you've diced it as finely as you possibly can. I've got a nice big sharp knife there. I, I suggest you get likewise. Anyway, we'll see you in a minute when, uh, when I've got all that meat prepared. Okay, that took a few minutes, but it's worth taking the time to do it. Now I'm going to very quickly chop up the herbs. Got some parsley there. I'm also going to slice up the sage and finely chop the rosemary. Get the rosemary as fine as you possibly can, guys. Uh, it's a more woody herb. You know, you don't want big pieces of that in your mouth. Um, a classic Melton Mowbray would have zero herbs in it, but hey, I'm a chef and I like to add things that I think make it better and. I think you'll find it adds better and also later on you'll see the herb in it and it it looks really nice okay so we'll forward fast to when I've got all those herbs done as well all right herbs are beautifully done now we've got to season this white pepper don't be too afraid with this. You've got to put a fairly generous amount of seasoning into this pork pie is best eaten. Well, maybe not absolutely cold from the fridge, but at least uh, reasonably chilled. So been quite generous with the white pepper and the black pepper and the salt. Now, best tool in the kitchen is your hand. Get it in there. Get this nicely mixed. Okay, once you've done that for a minute or so, we'll see you uh, in a moment. It is now time to melt the lard and the water. So there's a lovely demonstration of adding lard and water in a pan. That's gonna go on a stove to melt. It doesn't really need to boil. That came to the simmer pretty quickly. Make a well in the flour, pour in your melted fat and water, and basically just bring it together with a spoon, as you can see being beautifully demonstrated there. Here we go, that's about a minute later. It's come together, now I'm going to get it out of the bowl and we're gonna get our hand in there and we're gonna knead this a little bit, get it a bit smoother. It's hot, so just be aware of that, okay? You, uh, if you're a bit delicate in the hands, you know, just, just take it easy. You may even wanna wear a little disposable glove. But hey, anyway, that's looking very nice. We'll see you in a moment when we're uh, ready to roll. So here you can see me, I'm just portioning 
the pastry into four pieces because I have four Dario molds. Those Dario molds were chilled and I brushed the sides with melted lard. You could use melted butter or just try to grease them with some oil, but that will help you remove these later on. That is quite important. Anyway, what you can see me now doing is that that quarter piece, I'm now taking off a quarter of that. That will be for the lid. I recommend popping that back in the cling film actually. I didn't do that there. Naughty boy. Anyway, what you're going to see next is a close up of me rolling out this piece to approximately half a centimeter. That's the sort of size I want to fit into the Daria mold. The classic method here, as I mentioned earlier, is to use something called a dolly. It's a, like a sort of a really wide rolling pin. You would put a lump of the, the dough at the bottom, the rolling pin would sit in the middle, and you would raise with your hands the pastry up the sides. That is why they're called hand raised pies. I don't have a dolly. That's why we're using the Daria molds. Please forgive me for that. I think you'll find that the end result is no difference, okay? The next part of the process, once we have all our Daria molds lined, is gonna to be to fill them. So in a second you'll see the next scene. I now have five Daria molds ready. There were four. I realized I had more pastry and more mixture to do four, so I got another one ready. What you just saw me do there was take a ball and throw it in. I saw that in a video earlier. That's what they suggested. It's not necessary, so now I've changed my plan. So what, what I've done there, I've just set forward to, I've evenly distributed all the pie mixture into the five molds, and I am extremely happy with what we see there. The next stage is to roll the lid. So you know those little quarter pieces you had? That's those. So just roll those out again, about half a centimeter, as we've done there, beautifully demonstrated. Right, what we're doing now is just brushing with a little water. Nothing else is necessary, that water is enough to bind this pastry together. Lay it on top, do it carefully here, you can see what I'm doing. I'm trying to actually push it down onto the meat. Trying to uh, remove any sort of gaps of air, that's only just going to pop up and leave you a misshapen pie at the end. Just lifting the sides, there we go. I'm very happy with how that looks, but we have too much. So with a pair of scissors, just snip off some. We want to have maybe half a centimeter. Just use technology there to speed that up. Now with the sides even, raised up, I'm going to crimp. Like so you can see what I'm doing there, one finger and then my forefinger and thumb on the other side. Just pushing that in, giving a nice presentation. Egg washing, but before we egg wash, before these go in the oven, create a little hole. If you make a really large pie, you can actually put something like the a funnel or the, the, the metal top of a piping tube. But just a hole with a knife is enough. It's gonna let the steam escape when they're when they're when they're baking. Egg wash thoroughly, all of them. Get it really be generous with this part, okay? Now that's all done now. Time for the oven. Time to add the jelly. This time is in the form of a chicken stock. A little stab of a knife that helps the jelly go in and then just make sure the center hole is reopened. I'm gonna share a recipe for this reduced chicken stock uh, as I've done that previously. You can also make a ham stock. If you ask your butcher for a pig's trotter, that is ideal. Put that in a pan, cover it with water and some stock vegetables. Simmer that for a couple of hours, you will have a very, very gelatinous jelly. If you're not confident with it, you test it. You put a small part of it in the fridge for a little while, you see how it sets. Simple as that. Anyway, what you can see me doing here is doing my very best to fill these pies evenly with as much of this chicken stock as I possibly can. Just turning the tray there halfway through makes it a bit easier to access these on the other side. Once pies are full, pop them in the fridge to cool, at least a couple of hours. So, I've 
cut these pork pies about an hour too soon from the fridge. I couldn't wait. I'm being very, very uh, impetuous there. But uh, I haven't made them for so long. I wanted to give them a try. It's, the pastry is making that wonderful noise. Really, really crunchy. It's come off the top there now. Yeah, whatever you want with these, but for me, there is only that brownstone pickle. And uh, I'm going to eat this in front of me now. Can't wait. All I suggest is um, have a crack at them. Don't worry if they don't look great. You know, it's, the, it's how they taste at the end of the day. Any questions, please put them in, uh, in the comments below. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much for watching again. Uncle Matt's Cookery Lessons.